Look at this video game. So beautiful it makes me laugh. Okay, enough of that. Here are my tips for Horizon Forbidden West. Let's go. Hey, if you like dumb Nickelback jokes, be sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, I swear I'll never do it again. Maybe, we'll see. But let's get into the video. Let's start with some exploration tips. In the settings under the visual menu, I highly recommend you turn climbing annotations to always on. This will not only make puzzles easier as you can see everything that you can interact with or climb, but there are tons of cliff faces that are climbable and the markers help so you can see exactly where you can go as some of the cliff will be climbable and some of it won't be. These are a huge benefit that you should absolutely have. Explore, but not too much in the early stages. Aloy will unlock tools later on into the story like the shield wing that will allow you to access areas that may be blocked so you'll come across plenty of blocked paths so just know that later down the line in the main story these areas will become available to you. You can now pick up more materials than you can carry and the extras will actually go into your stash. At any of the settlements or the shelters you will have a stash box make sure you open this and refill all categories so you have a complete stock of all of the craftable materials every time you do go to one of these locations just to keep yourself stocked up. As soon as you reach the door you can get a mount. Find a charger and override one this will unlock the mount and then you can keep that mount with you. You can summon it as you go exploring, wandering around, much better to do to make traversal easier. You can use the pull caster to pull chests off areas that are otherwise unable to reach. You can also use the full focus mode to highlight things that you can pull in that blue color as the focus pulse doesn't actually highlight things that the pull caster can pull. This will help you with puzzles. It's just worth pointing out. And let's talk about the workbench upgrades. The workbenches are new in Horizon Forbidden West and you should regularly be checking at the workbenches to see what weapons and armor you can upgrade you will need to upgrade your gear to unlock the coil and weave slots and just increase their stats overall but be careful not to waste too many of the rarer resources as you will be finding weapons and outfits as you explore and throughout the game that'll be better than the initial ones that you start out with most importantly though you should be upgrading your pouches at any workbench you can create a job for the required parts to upgrade that item or the pouch you should create jobs for all of the pouch upgrades so you can track them when you're out exploring but also be because it places a map marker on with the general area where you can find the resource you need. So when you're out exploring, you come across that area, you can go kill that wildlife creature or whatever it may be, and then you can return to the workbench at a later stage and actually get that upgrade. You absolutely need to upgrade your pouches so you can carry more medicinal herbs or resources or traps or arrows, all of these things, you absolutely need to upgrade your pouches. If you need a specific resource from a machine, you can actually knock off that part of the machine to guarantee that that machine part will drop. Say for example you need the lance horn antler, you should knock off the antlers on the lance horns to actually guarantee that part. If you just kill the creature you'll get a chance to loot it off the corpse but if you knock the part off you're guaranteed to get it because you've knocked it off. Be careful what resources you do sell to vendors however as some upgrade recipes require the machine hearts from various machines and the machine hearts shop in the valuable section which is typically just reserved to sell things to vendors so be careful what you do sell when you are looking at the vendors. Side quests can lead to new gear and weapons so do them regularly, do them often. They will also reward you with just raw skill points. Even if you don't level up, they'll just give you skill points, which is absolutely a valuable thing to have. And it perfectly leads us into our next section, which is skills. And there are so many skills in Horizon Forbidden West. There are so many trees, man. Like there's a lot to go through here. And unfortunately you can't respect your skills. So the choices you make here does matter. You need to be certain what you are picking. You can get all of the skills, but it will require you to do basically all of the side quests and main story, etc., etc. What I will suggest to you is to pick one skill tree to focus on initially. Whatever is your main play style, whether it be stealth, machines, or arrows, whatever it may be, pick that as your initial one and focus on that tree so you can get some of the higher level upgrades earlier in the game and then branch out from there. Be sure to unlock a Valor Surge as soon as possible. These are great buffs, whichever one you do choose. It's basically like an ultimate ability from Overwatch for Aloy. She just, you know, gets a super power up and go crazy. So these are perfect to get to help you with some of the harder level machines and they're just great buffs in combat in general. I'll have a video later on breaking down all of the different skill trees and which ones you should pick and breaking down which skills are best. But generally at this point, all you need to know is to do side quests to get yourself access to tons of skill points and then spend them freely in one tree to level up as much as possible. Let's talk about combat next. And now the dodge is something that's well worth mentioning and the dodge doesn't seem to have invincibility frames or if it does, it is very few. What I mean by that is in a lot of games when you dodge, you'll have like 
a period of time where you're invincible, but in Horizon Forbidden West, you really actually have to physically dodge the attack. It's not a matter of just pressing the dodge button, so make sure you're dodging left and right and dodging those crazy attacks that are coming towards you. Set up each fight with a plan before attacking the machine. Scan the machine, learn its weaknesses, and execute. This time around, the weaknesses are even more important when taking down the bigger machines, so use the different element types to your advantage and the weapons that you have to your advantage and create chain reactions by destroying the canisters on their backs, whatever you can do to just deal maximum amounts of damage and create that advantage in the fight. And because of this, you should start most encounters from stealth so you can scan the machine, learn its weaknesses, plan out what you're going to do, put some trip casters down, some traps, whatever it may be. Speaking of traps, they are much stronger in Horizon Forbidden West and you should be using them as much as possible, especially in the early stages. The blast trap will often one-shot machines that would otherwise give you a bit of trouble if you aren't using it. But you don't have to necessarily stealth, you can still just place a trap and then just run it into it later. But start each encounter as stealth, make a plan, execute it. If it doesn't go well, I mean, for most cases it doesn't, but at least you've got then, you've got traps and rope caster traps around so that you can use them to your advantage in the fight and kind of lead the machines through those areas. You should be using the melee pits to practice some of the combat techniques that you've unlocked, as well as just practicing combat in general. It will help you learn different combos and techniques that you can use when you're out fighting machines and humans and humans are a little bit different in Horizon Forbidden West and this is the best way just to learn how to deal with these combat encounters. After you get to a certain point relatively early on in the Daunt main story you will unlock much more options in your weapon wheel because you'll just unlock more weapons and gear to use. Make sure you've got plenty of different element types on your weapon wheel so you can take on most of the machine's weaknesses without having too much trouble to change or switch between different things. When in doubt Acid is always pretty good and initiating the chain reactions from the canisters on the back of different machines for whatever element types can just deal tons of damage and finish fights before they've started. And just a couple of things I forgot to mention earlier, you can now fast travel for free from a campfire to another campfire without having to use a fast travel pack. So you can save yourself those resources and not waste them by making fast travel packs. Though if you're out in the wilds and you do need to use a pack, you may as well to fast travel. Metal shards are a currency as well as a crafting resource. So don't spend all of them on upgrades or buying all of the latest and greatest gear from any of the vendors that you find as you will need them later for crafting. So just be careful of your metal shard count. And in the settings, you can also change the weapon wheel slowdown. So if you're trying to craft ammo on the fly in a fight, you actually change this to slow down time more aggressively than the initial normal. So it's much easier to avoid some of the attacks that come towards you because the creatures aren't gonna stop if you're trying to craft in combat. And my last tip for you is to subscribe. I know, it's a cop out, but I have more Horizon Forbidden West content plan as well as Elden Ring which comes out very soon so be sure to keep an eye on the channel for that and I will help you get through this really enjoyable and massive video game. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.